And for the end of the axial muscles, we just have a few of them that move our vertebral column and are located in our abdomen. Are you ready? First of all, we have internal and external intercostals. Hopefully these muscles actually sound remotely familiar to you already because we learned them as muscles of um, respiration, as muscles of breathing. And they're located between the ribs. I don't know why I don't remember to make my new um, whatever. Intercostal muscles are found between ribs. Now, here's your sternum, so this is anterior. And external intercostals are superficial to internal intercostals. External intercostals have fibers that go in this direction. In Wendy land, that means that the fibers are going in the same direction as my fingers when I put my hands in my pockets. Can you visualize that? Those are my external intercostals. That's the direction they're going, and they're found on the external, they're found superficial to internal intercostals. Ready? Internal intercostals, I'm going to change my color here. Internal intercostals, the fibers go in the opposite direction, and they are deep to external intercostals. So internal intercostals look like this, and I put my hands in my front pockets. External intercostals are like, imagine you put your hands in your back pockets. If you're my kid, wearing your pants backwards, because you know that's how he rolls. Can you visualize that? It actually will be handy to remember the fiber direction because we have more muscles that follow that same pattern. Externals, front pockets. Internals, back pockets. I think that's very straightforward. And your intercostals are between your ribs. What do they attach to? Your ribs, dog. They span one, one rib, one rib, and there they are in between them. And we probably can find them on our dead humans. What do they do? What do your external intercostals do? I'm terribly sorry about this, but I'm afraid you're going to have to memorize this one because I whew, could not even begin to visualize how <clears throat> the external intercostals work together to make this happen. But the fact is that when, and you already know this, when the external intercostals contract, they actually increase the volume of your thoracic cavity, facilitating breathing. You breathe in because your, inter, your external intercostals contract, increasing the volume of the chest cavity. Cool. Your internal intercostals, when they contract, the volume of your chest cavity decreases and you exhale. So internal and external intercostals are muscles of respiration found between your ribs. External and internal obliques are found in your abs. Who do you think we can see right here? Oh, this is super cool because mm, 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 we're not going with that because I'm giving you a, a color hint that's going to make you really happy. What do you notice? Is this true? Do you notice this about the direction of the fibers? It's true, even if you can't tell from my picture. The fibers of your external obliques are running in the same direction like you're putting your hands in your pockets on the front side, if you're wearing your pants on the front side. And guess what is deep to external intercost? I mean external obliques. That would be your internal obliques, my friends. And can you see them right here? Oh, holy heck -a moly But yeah, don't analyze that too much because I don't know. But if, I mean, really, it should look like this. One of them going this way and one of them going this way. And I don't know why they look like, to me, they're going exactly the same way. But ignore that because they're not supposed to be. Oh, yeah, they are. That totally is right. Because look, these, right, these would be, oh, for crying out loud, let's just make them different colors. And then you can visualize that these are my little internal obliques going the same direction. Ugh, don't look at that because it's on the other side of the body. That's why it was messing with my brain. But external obliques are going to be over the top of this going the opposite direction. 
front pockets, back pockets, internal obliques, back pocket. Now, interestingly, both your external and internal obliques have the same action. When you have one of them contracting, you're actually going to laterally flex. When you have both of them contracting, you actually are going to flex. Does that work for you? I'm, well, that's what your book says. We'll go with it. Um, rectus abdominis. Rectus, what does rectus mean? Rectus means straight, my main men. Look, look at this straight muscle right here. Rectus abdominis is your six-pack muscles. And rectus abdominis definitely allows you to flex your thorax when you contract those muscles. They attach down here to the pubic symphysis of your, um, your pelvis. And it would be definitely a phenomenal test question for me to show you a bone and say, and point to a part and say, name this bump and then tell me a muscle that attaches here. So if I showed you my pubic symphysis, the pubic bone, then you would say, dude, rectus abdominis attaches there. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then there's um, somebody else. Oh, deep to all of these guys is another set, another muscle, and I drew over it right here, but its fibers are going in this direction, and it's deep, deep to all of them. And on Frank, we actually have peeled back external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis. And look at the direction that I made the fibers go. They go something, something like, a, like a that. And so those fibers are deep to everything else. That's transversus abdominis. Interestingly, transversus abdominis, external and internal obliques all have the same actions. All right, last we have our diaphragm. And I think I had put a picture of my diaphragm up here because I think this is cool. If you look at the diaphragm from the, what, looking up into the, what, inferior surface of your diaphragm, you can actually see that, yeah, it makes sense that the diaphragm attaches all the way around to your ribs. And then I didn't ever visualize this, but the diaphragm actually attaches to this structure in the middle here, which is kind of a, a tendon. And so it has this little central tendon that all the muscle fibers attach to. And then when it, when all those muscle fibers contract, remember that, that takes your diaphragm from this shape to this shape, which increases the volume of your pleural cavity, which sucks air into your thoracic cavity. And you breathe. All right. Um, all of them are innervated by various spinal nerves except for um, the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve, and this is one that we will know. All right, let's move and start doing um, superior limbs.